When you're going through hell, there are no style points for getting out. It's not an Olympic figure skating competition. You either get out or you stay stuck. Any voice telling you you can't take the path of least resistance is not a voice invested in your freedom. My name is John Oakes, and this is The Easy Way Out. I'm here today with Wesley Thunder. Again, we're going to be talking today about resistance training. Yes, today we'll be talking about resistance training for people in big bodies specifically. Wes, thank you for joining me here today. That sounds very podcasty. Um, we talk all the time, so this isn't actually that <laughs> yeah. big of a deal. We just did a little <laughs> bit more setup, and and Wes put his pen down because it, he's going to be clicking it all the time. Other than that, this is basically a normal coaching session. So Wes, maybe just for an update, maybe a couple of weeks ago, the original episode, we t- um, you and I talked about anxiety, anxiety reduction, and then we had a follow-up to that in our own private coaching. Maybe just give a quick um, recap as to the improvements you've seen in especially the last, you know, few days or week. Yeah. So um, the biggest thing that I think that I've come to understand, um, you know, after hearing it multiple times uh, from you, uh, I, I had identified in the podcast that breathing was a big issue with me. So I started there and really try to pay attention to taking the breaths and getting present in the moment. And what exactly does it mean to accept reality or not resist? That's been really eye-opening to me because, you know, as a problem solver kind of person all the time, it just, for the longest time, it just made zero sense to me. How am I supposed to sit here and just how is this okay? You know, how is what I'm feeling? Okay. How is Mm -hmm. any of this? Okay. And when I finally learned what it is to just not engage with it or just be with it, uh, focus on the spots, you know, my body where I feel it. I mean, it's, it's really weird. I even had like a, a knot in my neck. I hold a lot of tension in my neck and it was bothering me really bad yesterday. I had a, a parade to do with some of my, with some of my students and on the drive there, I just sat with it and I let it hurt and let it be there. And it didn't really even bother me the rest of the day. I mean, it's a, it's a very weird thing, but the the practice of just being present with things and not letting them get to you has been extremely helpful. It's been, it's been awesome. Yeah. And actually letting them get to you, it, it's kind of the, the trick. It's, it's all yeah, 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 counterintuitive yeah. from how we're, from how we're taught to relate to pain and anxiety and negative emotions, quote unquote, negative emotions. It turns out there really are no negative emotions because emotions Mm. are just part of the reality of our world. So that's great to hear. I'm really glad that that's helping. If it makes you feel any better, I am going through the same process all the time with new things and new ways. You come up with something new where it's just a new aspect of life and you start to notice that you're routinely getting overly stressed and, you know, burned out or you get in that body tension and yeah, you just need to sit with it and kind of realize that you're resisting something that you probably haven't ever noticed that you're resisting. It's just part of your world. And that's a a big part of, you know, whether it's trauma, healing, recovery, PTSD, recovery, I'm recovering from anxiety or, you know, panic disorders figuring out, oh, wow, this is something that's been baked into the fabric of my being since before I, you know, could think. And to realize that, oh, I am resisting something that I've never known that I was resisting because that's the only way I've known how to live. That is the trick. It's it's finding the things that you didn't know were there. And that makes it very hard to look for them. And it can be hard to see them even once you've identified them because it's just so easy to flow back into the the old pattern and the old way of thinking where this stuff just sort of gets baked into the wallpaper and it can so easily camouflage itself again if you let your awareness sort of decline. So this week we wanted to talk about uh, resistance training. You've you've had some extra time, uh, at least you did for, you know, through June, and you had some questions about how to build muscle while in a calorie deficit um, with 
fairly limited uh, workout equipment. You don't currently have a gym membership. Um, you live in a fairly small town, so it's not like there's going to be a lot of big, big commercial gyms. Most people are just like bailing hay as their workout, I assume. So, you know, it's just, <laughs> just chasing farm animals and yes. Very effective. You're not totally Farmer wrong. I mean, that's not, thing. that's not. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we start off with just where you're at or your experience with lifting weights or doing any sort of resistance training? So my only experience that I've had um, was when I played football, you know, just your typical, you know, wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning and go to the weight room and pound the iron out and, and you know, we I think on like Mondays and Wednesdays we had upper body and Tuesdays and Thursdays was lower body, then Fridays was endurance stuff, running and all that. Um, and it's been a long, long time since I've done that. I've always had uh, free weights around, but I I've never really known what to or how I guess how creative you can get with those or what kind of exercises you can do, you know, especially with or what areas to, to target specifically. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at now. You know, like I, I really work my upper body with the, with the free weights. I don't really do a whole lot of lower body stuff cause I'm doing kind of some like rehab stuff for my knees, you know, which has been working mm -hmm. really, really well. Well, I just had that parade yesterday and knees did so, so good. I had zero pain, zero issue. I walked like two miles, no problem. So that's, that's really hopeful for me. But I, when I did weight lift, I really enjoyed it, uh, you know, to see the progress or to feel stronger or to push yourself a little bit. It's kind of something in my workouts that I, I really enjoy that I haven't really had in a while. And that's kind of why I want to get back into it. That's awesome. So it's good that you at least have a positive experience with it. Um, a lot of people, you know, our, our society hasn't done a really good job of encouraging women to, to lift. Um, for mm -hmm. a long time, there was this belief that, you know, if you lifted weights, you were going to look bulky. And it's like, no, man, like it, most, you know, like if, if you are to the point where you're looking not as feminine as you want to, then you must be like a genetic anomaly because to, to put on that much muscle to where you, you know, you lose your shape is, would be insane. You probably have to be on drugs to do, to accomplish. And so luckily, you know, at least the younger generation now is learning that getting stronger is, that doesn't require a huge change in your physique, but also you can make huge changes in your physique with the proper combination of, you know, how you're eating and how you're training. And I think kind of the thing that that helped a lot was something very superficial. It was just all the butts on Instagram. And then all, all these girls were like, I want a big butt. And so then everyone was like, well, you got to squat, you got to, you got to work your glutes. And so this got a lot of people in the younger generation into um, lifting. You know, it's like you used to see, you know, 10 years ago, if you went to the gym, you would see women in the gym doing, you know, their biceps, working their arms, you know, cause that was, that was the thing you know, that some women were into back in the day was they wanted to have toned arms like Michelle Obama or Angela Bassett. And, you know, what was that? Um, how Stella got her groove back. But um, nowadays you see, you see the ladies in the squat racks and it's cool because that's where you can develop the most muscle, whether people are fit and just trying to accentuate certain body parts or they are severely overweight and they're trying to introduce resistance training as a way to help with that. Um, there's a lot of crossover in the principles that we apply. It's just the, the application is going to be a little bit different um, because of the mobility issues, because of the fact that we are carrying a lot of weight on our body already. And, you know, there's a different sort of injury risk because of that and a different, a different strength curve in the motions you're doing because you're carrying so much of the resistance on your body rather than on the barbell, so to speak. So let's talk about some of the pitfalls that people can fall into generally and some of the advantages that we have when we're in a big body. 
so that we know kind of what the what the pros and cons are of being a bigger person. One of the pitfalls is that people just never start because they think I'm 375 pounds. I can't do X, Y, or Z. I can't bench press. I can't do squats in the squat rack. I can't work out because they have a rigid idea of what working out looks like. So the first tip would be to just wipe the slate clean as to what you think exercise or working out or resistance training or lifting weights looks like and realize there's a ton of ways to approach it. One of the biggest pitfalls then is to simply not know how you can progress, how you can start exactly where you are, because a lot of times you get on Instagram and you see people teaching about exercise and no one is talking about exercises that you can currently perform. So you feel like, well, I can't do that. So I don't even know where to start. Right. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about progressions. And that's going to be a key thing to learn if you are just starting to work out in a big body, especially if you're doing so at home, which is, again, one of the big challenges because a lot of people who are really big don't feel comfortable in the gym or they just don't have the experience. There's just there's usually an inverse relationship between how big someone is and how much time they've spent in the gym previously. Not always the case, but there's a comfort issue at the very least. So one of the advantages, though, is that we don't need to underestimate our athletic ability. One of my most viral TikToks was talking about how if you're overweight, you're an athlete because the amount of work you're doing just to get through your daily life is incredible. And this is why when you're starting to go on an exercise or diet plan, you can't think, well, I'm sedentary, so therefore I you know, need to really crank down my calories. Yeah, I mean, we want to reduce calories when we're losing weight. That's a key part of it. But if you realize how much effort it takes just to get up off the couch or to get in and out of your car or to go for a walk, simple, simple stuff, you start to value those activities more at the quantities and intensities that you're already doing them. And once you realize that you have quite a platform to, to jump off of, that can help make incremental, like proper progress. Because a lot of times you don't need to be in the gym if you have a big body because you're carrying your gym around. And if you use it correctly, you can build an insane amount of muscle without lifting quote unquote weights. The flip side of that is that when people in big bodies start moving around, they have mobility issues. If they are jumping ahead in progressions faster than they should, they can, you know, be putting a lot of strain on muscles that aren't developed yet. So if someone who's 150 pounds and completely out of shape, if they get down for a push-up, that's very different than someone who's 350 pounds, equally out of shape, getting down for a push-up. So the, the risk of injury is is higher and the risk of frankly just overdoing it right because one of the problems whether you're 150 pounds or 350 pounds one of the biggest mistakes people make is working out too hard in the beginning and then they get extremely sore and now they associate working out with pain both in the moment and for days afterward and that's just from you know muscle soreness and so we need a way for bigger people to take advantage of the weight they're carrying around, not let it be a liability, somehow use it, but then not use it too much and have a, a framework for progression and how to use that weight and that resistance to build muscle in the long run. We want to keep things in the easy zone. We want to keep things flowy. That is the best way to create long-term results. So real quick, if, if you are on a weight loss journey, it's very important to think about building muscle right from the beginning. Obviously, when you're first starting to work out, you just need to do whatever workouts you're able to do, whether it's just walking or a, a stationary bike or anything that helps you burn calories. You know, Wes does yoga, goes on little walks, and, you know, he's lost considerable amount of weight just doing that. That's all you need to focus on when you're first starting. However, at some point, most people get that itch. They want to start resistance training and you don't have to tell them to do it. It's funny how the, some of these things work for us, you know, the way our minds work. There's an interest in getting stronger. Some people 
identify the fact that, uh, you know, people who just do a ton of cardio and slash their calories, a lot of what people are afraid of ending up with is the body that they've seen in the after pictures where they're just, this person is basically a tiny person who looks like they're wearing a deflated fat suit. And, you know, that's, it's a minority concern, but it is a concern. And I'm telling you, like the people who resistance train and don't crash diet their way down to their goal weight, they're going to a look a lot better. They're not going to, they're not going to look as deflated. Their, their body's going to look full athletic. I'm not saying that this is a cure for loose skin. Once you've lost weight, there's really no cure for that other than surgery. Some people just are genetically different. Some people bounce back. But more importantly, when I think of an imminent rebound, I think of that person who they get down to their goal weight and they look like a string bean. And that that is someone who is metabolically set up for failure. We have enough mental reasons why people you know, rebound. But one of the physical reasons is that people reduce their body weight without adding in lean mass to somewhat add to their, you know, basal metabolic rate and their ability to burn calories and their ability to store excess glycogen when it comes into the system. That's why when you are on a, you know, longer term weight loss journey, if you're trying to lose 50, 100, 200 pounds, You do want to start thinking about resistance training as soon as you can, because that will allow you to build the most muscle possible that will be money in the bank once you reach your goal weight. You're going to feel better. You're going to actually feel athletic. You're going to hopefully have established a love for training that will carry you through your maintenance years. And really, I I was just talking to Wes about this the last time we spoke in our private session that it's really cool when you start thinking beyond goal weight because there's a whole life after you get the weight off. And we, you know, when you're big, it's, it's very easy to be solely focused on that goal line because that's where you associate hope for the future. But at some point, once you start seeing like, Oh, I can do this. And that's one thing I'm proud of that with my clients, I build confidence far before the, the goal weight. And that's, I think, really key to help people be able to self-direct and so that when they go away from my one-on-one instruction, like I'm confident because they're confident and they, they know how to pilot their ship. And so that's important. Also, just metabolically setting yourself up for success and giving yourself all the tools you'll need or benefit from for the rest of your life, because it's not just about you know, hey, I'd like to live another five years, which was kind of my goal when I was losing weight. It's now I want to live well. I'm into my 80s and maybe 90s. And who knows, they might allow you to like 3D print organs and stuff like so that could keep us going a bit further than we might otherwise think. So does that track? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. I mean, I've since I've started to work out a little bit more consistently, especially over the summer, Part of me has been thinking short term, but a lot of me is trying to think afterwards as well. And, you know, you always talk about connecting to your values. And I just remember how much I loved weightlifting. So I I just kind of want to get going on it. And I'm not very educated on it. And that's kind of why I'm excited to start slow and and get into it. Right on. So in order to keep this focused and, you know, from getting to be too long, I'm just going to take the rest of our discussion and apply it directly to Wes. Luckily, This will impact a lot of people because everybody can work out at home if they want to. Um, If you if you do have access to a gym and you want to learn how to work out in a gym, that'll be a conversation for a different day. But some of these same principles will apply. So first thing, when you are working out at home, when you don't have a ton of gym equipment, you're going to be using what we call calisthenics or body weight exercises. And I think that this is the this is the foundation of the house we want to build, right? Adding in free weights is going to help. It can help add resistance as you master your own body weight. But for context, that's not going to be a real issue for for Wes because you're still north of four bills, right? Mm -hmm. So that gives you a ton of runway 
Oh yeah, and just from personal experience, when I when I got to my goal weight, I it was during the quarantine, and it was about three or four months into quarantine. I had bought a gorilla bow, which was sort of like a banded resistance training device, and you know that that worked decently well. Got me some good workouts. Really, what what was most developed, and I hadn't really been taking pictures. But I started taking more pictures, progress pictures, as I was getting closer to my goal weight. And man, when I was coming into goal weight, my back was just jacked, especially my upper back. And it was because like the gorilla bow was great, you know, but you can't do a like really heavy back training on it. So I was doing like band assisted pull ups and this like broomstick row in my kitchen with just a broomstick you know, laying across countertops and me in the middle, you know, yanking myself up and down on that thing. And I hated that a lot of times because it was hard because, you know, even me as at my slimmest, you know, I'm 230 pounds, 240 pounds, 250. So that's a lot of weight to haul up to a broomstick. But man, I was yoked. And so, yeah, just from personal experience, you can, you can do some amazing things at home just to inspire people a little bit about the possibilities. So first off, instead of thinking about exercises, I think people would benefit from thinking about movement patterns. So we can kind of take like a functional approach. One question I have is what knee rehab exercises have you been doing and where did you come across these? So I I came across them on YouTube and there, I think there's five or six moves that I do. And the first one is you sit on the floor with your legs out and then you uh, push your knee to the ground to help tense that muscle right above your knee. It's basically working on the muscles kind of around the knee. Mm -hmm. And then you do that for, for reps and then you do the same thing and then lift your, so you push the knee towards the ground and then lift it up like your whole leg up. Um, You do that for some reps. I get a roller, put my, leg Mm -hmm. on top of that where the knee bends and then just lift the leg up straight out and do that. And then I do yoga bridges and then like a laying on your side and then having your feet kind of angled with your heel pointing up a little bit and then lifting the leg up, like lifting your whole leg up to kind of work out the hip area. Yep. Yeah. So that last exercise is key. What you're doing is you're putting your leg into extension at its furthest range, almost into hyper extension, because you're really trying to isometrically train those muscles. You're doing a little bit of contraction as you flex and extend the the knee in that modified position. It's not much range of motion, but you're really kind of trying to strengthen that nearly extended range of motion. And then what you're also doing is you're specifically strengthening your glute medius which is the glute muscle that sits just above the the big glute. A lot of knee pain comes from, you know, the glute muscles turning off a lot, especially when we're seated. One of the biggest tricks for knee pain is to get your glutes turned back, turned back on, work those, that glute medius, which is going to help your IT band not be as tight and it's not going to pull on your knee joint. That's something that I commonly deal with is that my, my knees will hurt if I, crouch. I'll just get like a stabbing pain in my knee. It feels like I'm about ready to tear something, but all it is, is just that, that IT band is just reefing on my knee joint. So yeah, getting your glutes turned on, working in those extreme ranges of motion. Um, Also things that might help you in the future is just things like walking backward. Because if you think about it, if you turn around and walk backward, you're putting your leg into that same motion but now you're putting a bit more resistance on it. So as you, that's a progression up from the modified leg extensions you're doing. And that will, that will help strengthen your knees and allow you better and better range of motion. Split squats and you know, deep range of motion stuff as you get lighter will make your knees bulletproof. But that's great to hear that you're doing those things and that they're working. I think it's encouraging for a lot of people to hear that knee and joint issues don't have to be uh, a forever thing. Oftentimes we feel a pain in the joint and we think, oh no, I've got a joint issue. 
actually you have a muscle issue because your certain muscles are working way too hard because other muscles are turned off and things are supposed to be in a better harmony and, and balance. It's sort of like if you're, if you have five people carrying a heavy piano and then two of those people just kind of stop lifting, the other three are going to have to take more of the weight and the piano is probably going to crash and scrape on the ground. So that's basically what's happening. So that, and that's why getting stronger is one of the best things you can do for your joint aches and pains, because oftentimes those pains are related to imbalances in strength and muscle activation. So let's think about movement patterns. We have the squat, right? We can squat down. We can lunge forward, right? The, these are two movement patterns that affect the, the legs. We can bend over, right? That's hip flexion. And then we can stand back up. That's hip extension. We can push forward with our arms and we can pull backward with our oh, arms, same, same limb. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm struggling today. <laughs> we can push with our arms, then we pull with, what body part is that? And I, if we wanted to split hairs, we could, we could draw a difference between pushing forward and sort of straight, straight ahead versus straight and down versus pushing somewhat overhead. And then with pulling, same thing applies. You can pull downward or you can pull you know, from straight in front of you back. And as you change those, you're going to be hitting slightly different muscles, but we're just talking about beginners. So we can basically chop everything down into push, pull, and legs. And I find this to be the easiest way to think about training the body when you're first starting. You get a push and a pull and do something with your legs, either a lunge or a squat, and you're going to be you know, starting to build a base of strength and muscular development all around your body. And so I think of it, these are sort of like primary colors, like blue, red, and yellow. For instance, let's say pushing is red and pulling is yellow. Then you want to start working in more triceps. Maybe that's orange, right? More biceps, maybe that's green. So you can just bring in your auxiliary muscle groups, the smaller muscle groups that help put our limbs through range of motion, you can bring those in secondarily, right? So we have our primary colors and our secondary colors. I think that's the, an easy way to understand how to split up movement patterns, but then also the muscles involved in those movement patterns, right? So when we're pushing, we want to be working the pec muscle and the tricep will get worked while we do that. So we don't need to do a lot of direct tricep work in the beginning, but then eventually you can add it in. And that would be part of the progression. Same thing for pulling. The biceps is a huge helper in pulling things toward your body. And just by working your pulling motions, you will be working your bicep. Oftentimes, if you do pulling exercises, your biceps will be sometimes the sorest <laughs> part on your body uh, until they get strong enough to where they're actually engaging your back muscles more than your biceps. Legs are a little bit different because we're sort of combining two opposing muscle groups, right? The, the hamstrings and the quads. One is responsible for extending the, the leg. One is responsible for flexing it. We basically have a, a triceps biceps combo in your leg. That's basically exactly what the triceps and biceps do for the arm. It's what the quads and hamstrings do for the leg. When you're developing a program, you can, the easiest way to hit all three of these is to do it in one workout. You don't have to, but that's one way to go about it. You can do upper lower splits. You can do a day where you just focus on push, just focus on, on pull, or just focus on legs. So let's break down sort of what this would look like. If you're doing a push exercise, Obviously, the gold standard is the push-up. However, not a lot of people can do push-ups, especially when they're first starting. Totally normal. So people all know from gym class, they know the, uh, the knee push-up, right? Where you just sort of rock on your bent knees as your fulcrum rather than your feet. Most people will struggle to do that as well. So you can start with using other surfaces. I think the before you're... you're rocking back and forth on your knees on the floor, you can 
angle up a little bit. So keep your knees on the floor, but maybe push off of the your couch or the ottoman or something, anything that's anchored, anything where you're not going to bash your head into something and just push on your knees. You can get onto your feet and then push at an angled surface as well. Like a countertop would be easier than your couch or some something lower down. So if you can find something that's roughly at knee height, something that's at hip height, and something that's at navel height, these will allow you progressions that are, because of the angle, going to be a lot easier. And the easiest way to start a progression would just be to push against the wall. And you can start just with your feet, you know, three feet from the wall and lean into it and push yourself out and lean back in and push yourself out. You start doing that and you get start building up a bit of strength. You can step, walk your feet out a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more until you're basically at the same angle and it would be easier to do it on a countertop. Make sense? Yep. And so that's, that's just the simplest way to progress into eventually doing full push-ups. With pull, it's a bit trickier but there are ways around it. Luckily, we can sort of use our legs as a cheat for pulling movements, and then we're working our legs as well. So for instance, um, my girls, they, they can't really do full pull-ups yet, but when we, do, when we do them, they can use resistance bands for assistance. So do an assisted pull-up that way. Usually if you're, you know, three, 400 pounds and you're, you're not used to doing pull-ups, there probably aren't enough resistance bands <laughs> to make that a workable solution. You're, you're going to be trying to get your foot into like 10 different bands. And that's probably just going to end in taking a shot to the groin, which is yeah, not fun. So what you can do is grab a broomstick and set it across to, you know, sturdy chairs. Some people can do that or I set it across countertops. You just want to make sure that you have a really solid broomstick. Again, I'm not, I'm not uh, <laughs> hating or anything. Like I'm a big guy, even at my leanest. So like I've broken a lot of stuff in my time, <laughs> whether I was heavy or not. So yeah, you want to find a broomstick that's up to the challenge. And I like to put towels down on like little tea towels, put them down on the counter so that I'm not hurting my countertops with the broomstick. And then you can do modified rows or you can do sort of a modified pull-up and you can put your feet directly under you to make that super easy. Or you can start to walk your feet out from under your butt, basically, and start to bring your hips up. You're eventually in a, in a position at the bottom of the movement where you're hanging from the bar, your back and your, your legs are flat and then at a 90 degree angle, your knees are bent toward the ground and your feet are flat on the ground, right? And so that's something you'd wanna eventually work up to in your rows. And then if you get really good at that, you can eventually put your feet up on a chair and you'll be rowing your entire body weight. And that's how you can really develop insane back muscles. With legs, it's fairly straightforward, right? We got squats and that's the easiest, safest thing to start with. If you are really just beginning Starting out, you can sit down on a chair and stand up and sit down on a chair and stand up. And if that's hard, find a higher chair or just use the arm of your couch or whatever whatever works for you. If you're only sitting down six inches and standing up six inches, that can be a great place to start. And then again, you just find a lower and lower surface to sit down on. And by totally taking the weight off your legs and then you using a little bit of momentum, forward and upward uh, with your torso, you can really assist yourself out of that seated position. Then eventually you can work up to where you're doing touch and goes, where you're sitting your butt back on the seat, but you're not resting on it. You're just touching your butt to the seat and standing back up. And you can work your way lower and lower until you are basically doing a body weight squat and you can start to just do shallower body weight squats. And then slowly over time, get those deeper and deeper until you're going into a full, as we say, ass to grass body weight squat. As, lo as long as you're, you're working up to it and you built the requisite strength, that is amazing for your knees. It's not bad for your knees to be in a full squat. I don't know where that came from, 
it takes a bit of ankle mobility as well, which can be lacking in bigger people. I definitely have dealt with that. But, you know, it's amazing. I don't have knee issues as much. I just had that ankle mobility thing. But I've seen my ankle mobility improve a ton by doing glute activations. So there's, yeah, it's all it's all connected. And your mobility and your strength can and your pain issues can all sort of, um, you know, heal one another in time. So yeah, that's, that's a really rough sketch of a way to approach resistance training as far as movement patterns. As our resident guinea pig, do any questions pop up from that? Like if, if you're someone who's new to this and you're listening at home, is there anything about this that's confusing still? Well, I, I would say that it's very interesting that like how much benefit you can get out of basic things like that, you know, because when I think of lifting or resistance training or building muscle, it's kind of against the the norm to think that simple things like squatting, lunging, push-ups, rows, those things are more than enough to kind of get you started. In my opinion, I'm like, okay, well, I got to have a bench and, you know, you got to do all this and all that or have all these weights and, and things like that. The only thing that I think would be tricky out of what you've explained because some of the stuff that I do, I do some of the yoga moves is the, 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 the rows or um, the stuff with the broom. I don't know how a setup, I guess I'm probably just having a hard time picturing in my mind what that actually would look like or mm-hmm. what that would be. Yeah. Or that's if very a guy common. my size could, you know, could, could do something like that. Yeah, that's great. Let's talk about that because working the back is the hardest thing to do when you're, when you're first starting. And this is where spending a little bit of money can make this not only so much easier, but so much more effective and so much more enjoyable. So you just need to think like a monkey. Okay. We have the ability to hang from stuff, right? But in our houses, we don't have a lot of stuff that we can, you know, dangle from more is the pity. So what I have right now currently is a setup where I have one of those pull-up bars that you hook into your door frame, right? It just $30, you know, you you just, do you know what I'm talking about? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So there's the kind that screw into your door frame and stay there. Um, Then there's the kind where you can set it aside and, you know, operate your, your door just fine. But then you basically, it kind of like hooks in like this against the door frame and you'd be surprised that you think it would rip your door apart. But um, it actually is totally fine because it's it's like cantilevered to where it's your weight ends up pressing into the wall rather than down on the door. It's really cool. So that is super cheap. Obviously, when you're 350, 450, you're not going to be knocking out pull-ups. However, what you can do is use this as a base for some gymnastic rings. Gymnastic rings are cheap and they're easy to set up and they allow you to do all kinds of stuff. And the great thing about them is that they adjust so we can do those modified pull-ups like we were talking about. And if you're a taller person mm-hmm. like me, you can you can you can put those those gymnastics rings up high because I have long ass monkey arms and I can get my feet under me basically just do a pull up. But the gymnastics rings allow you to create that vertical change that's going to help you do different things and work through different progressions. You know, you're not going to be stuck. Like like with the pushing, we have the wall and then a countertop and then a a bench, you know, something, all these different levels. With pulling, being able to change the height of what you're pulling on really helps. So the gymnastics rings I have are great. They're 50 bucks. I got them through Oh, is it hybrid calisthenics? It's a really cool guy on YouTube, teaches people how to, you know, do calisthenics stuff. In fact, I have an extra set that they sent me and I'm going to do that. I'm going to give that away to, you know, somebody in in a, in a challenge or something. But yeah, I highly recommend that sort of thing. Another piece of equipment that usually runs a little bit more, 60 to $80, is a pair of dip bars but it sits on your floor and it's meant for doing dips where you would have there's two bars on top where you can hold on to and there should be enough space for you to dip down and then 
push back up, right? That's a great pushing exercise when you're light enough to and strong enough to do that. But when you are just working your way through the pulling motions, these can be really effective because you can get underneath it and grab onto those bars and pull up into it. And that can be a way to do uh, pulling motions as well. I can link to some of these things in the show notes below, whether you're watching on YouTube or um, it, just in your whatever app podcast directory you're listening through. Um, so at least you can get some visuals. Yeah. Then we have, you know, assistant bands that if you're, if you're not super heavy, that's a good way to go. As far as working with your pull-ups, you can just hang from a bar. You can start to hang for five seconds and then try to get to six and then seven. So just those dead arm hangs can be a great way to build uh, muscle. If you're, you know, not strong enough to do a pull up, but you're not so heavy or weak that it would cause injury, you can do what are called eccentrics, right? So you're going to start maybe getting up on a chair. You're going to start in the top of the push up position with your chin above the bar and you're, you know, bringing your sternum up to the bar and then slowly let yourself down. And at first that might be like, a, you're just basically dropping. But over time, you can build up a ton of strength because most, most of muscle growth, the stimulus comes during the eccentric portion of a movement, not the concentric. So most of the, of the muscle building you're getting out of doing pull-ups comes on the way down. And this is why we always want to control the descent in a pull-up or a row, or we don't want to, um, when we're doing a push-up, we don't want to fall to the floor and then push up. We actually want to control our descent to the floor because that's actually where we're getting the biggest bang for our buck when it comes to hypertrophy, which is growing the muscle. You can definitely grow strength just by doing concentrics, but yeah, eccentrics are, are very valuable. So there's all kinds of progressions. You could just get under a table, okay? So here's, here's two other ideas. Just get under a table, grab up, like you're laying on the floor, just grab the edge of the table and you can row yourself up to it. Another way would be to grab two chairs, sturdy chairs that are, you know, some chairs are angled funny. Um, I, I don't have chairs at home that I can do this, but a lot of people do. You know, uh, like a straight backed dining chair that has like a little notch between the post and the, the, the cross piece in the top. You can stick your broom in there and, and basically you have this perfect little bridge. And as opposed to the countertops, you can actually bring these chairs in to create more stability. Whereas I can't bring my countertops closer. So you might not need as strong of a broomstick when you're doing this sort of setup. Also, you can, if you have chairs that are shaped right, where you can get your you know, arms around them, you can actually just row with chairs. And if I can find a YouTube or some YouTube video that shows how to do that, I can link that down below. So those are some more ideas on how to work in pulling, but a tiny, relatively small investment can make that super easy. I love gymnastics rings. I think that they're one of the most essential home pieces of home gym equipment, whether you're trying to annihilate your back or you're just starting out. I think gymnastics rings are fantastic. And there's actually more and more data to show that one of the best for people who are actually doing bodybuilding, one of the best movements for building your lats is the inverted row. So when you're just, you get, your body's basically level and you're going down and then pulling yourself up to the bar or to the, to the rings. And why rings are better than a bar is that you're able to turn your wrists so that it's very comfortable for your wrists and for your elbows as well. So you don't end up with um, use injuries like golfer's elbow or wrist pain that you can sometimes encounter with a, just a, using a bar that can't you know bend with your grip. So any questions from that? No, I think that helps clear a lot of that up. Um, I think, like you said, as long as you post some stuff to, to kind of dig into, I think it sounds like the the rowing would probably be for a guy my size might be the the most difficult thing to do. I guess it depends on how low the bar is, you know what I mean, or just kind of how to yeah. how to start that out as a beginner. 
But no, that that made total sense. Well, and you own your house, so you you can modify things a little bit more. You could sink some mm-hmm. like like eye big eye screws into some you know two by fours like over a doorway, and you could clip your gymnastics rings into those or so, something sturdy. You know, you could install a pull up bar and use that. And then you can just sort of, you know, you instead of doing an inverted row like this, where your body's flat to the ground, you can walk your feet more and more under wherever the, the, the point where the rings are anchored into the wall. And the more your feet are directly under that, the more you're going to be at a, at a favorable angle to gravity. So you're not going to be pulling against your full body weight. So you can just use right. angles to modify the intensity, just like we're doing um, push-ups, and that's what having some sort of apparatus like a, like rings allows you to do. So let's talk briefly about how to get stronger. Right, one of the thing, one of the pitfalls people fall into when they're just starting out is they find a workout that they like. Maybe they find something on YouTube, a little circuit. I had a consult um, with a client once who was doing you know, these workouts with their mom and she liked them and they can be great for burning some calories. But when you're first starting out, literally doing anything can build strength and muscle. But after a while, you're going to, they're going to be diminishing returns and you're not going to be getting much stimulus out of that if you're not progressing. So we need to, at some point, be doing more weight. So in this case, in this case, more resistance. So if we are pushing against a wall, we want to start pushing against the countertop and then move down to the arm of the couch. You know, so that that's a progression, right? Because that's the equivalent to putting more weight on a bar when you're doing a bench press. So as long as you're progressing bit by bit in that regard, you're you're good, right? And if, if you get stuck with that, you can think about different forms of progression. There's time under tension, uh, but most importantly, let's just focus on sets and reps, right? Volume. If you do, if you're having trouble getting from countertop push-ups to, or let's say if you're having trouble getting from pushing against the, the arm of the couch to getting down to where you're just pushing against the flat floor, floor, what you can do is increase the amount of volume that you're doing against the arm of the couch. So you can break this up into as many sets as you want, usually keeping it somewhere between five and 15 is a good idea. Um, But you can go as high as 25 or 30 repetitions in a set, no problem, and still be making great gains. So if if you're not strong enough to get down and do six regular push-ups, you can just keep increasing the number of couch arm push-ups that you can do until you're able to do six on the floor. And depending on the progression, usually you don't have to do, if, if you have to do more than, if you're, if you're having to do an exorbitant amount of volume for, to get from one progression to another, you're probably missing a progression in the middle. That There's probably something in the middle ground that you could do. So there's blocks, yoga blocks, those can be great for assisting with push-up exercises or eventually making them much harder, which we don't need to get into that today. But you can just do more sets or more reps per set. So if you're struggling to, to get more than like two or three regular push-ups and you're currently doing two sets of 10 on the arm of the couch, you can work that up to three sets of 10 or four sets of 10. You can keep adding sets and that will increase the volume, which should result in more muscle growth and strength gains. Or you can stick with the same two sets and start increasing the number of reps you're able to do in those sets. So get up to where you're doing 15, 16, 17 in the first set, and then maybe doing 14 or 15 in the second, and just try to get your total number up. And if you find that you're kind of maxing out there, then you add the third set, whatever is necessary to get that total number of reps up per session and eventually you'll be able to make that progression. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So I think if you have a knowledge of progressions and you're focusing on pushing, pulling and, you know, squatting, that's a great start. And 
there are definitely some some elements that we're not hitting super hard yet, but that's okay. You know, we're maybe not doing direct hamstring work, but that shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> Once you're ready to start adding in more volume to your workouts, like let's say, you know, you knock out your your push-ups, you're not at the floor yet, but you're happy with your progress and you know that in a few weeks you're going to get there. Same thing with whatever's going on with your pulling or your um, squatting. If you're noticing that you're still having trouble progressing, then maybe working in accessory movements, direct work for your triceps, your biceps, um, or your hamstrings can help you increase your overall strength and get you to that next progression to get you through that that next phase but that's you have to be ready to add in that volume you have to be ready to add in you know maybe the time but if you are ready starting to add in more movements more movement patterns you know the the curling the arms or extending the arms or flexing your legs basically using your, your glutes and hamstrings a lot like bridges and whatnot those are a great way to burn more calories in your workouts and you just strengthen your body in a more well-rounded fashion. But we're running out of time here today, so I think that's all we're going to get into. Any any questions for clarification on this sort of core way of looking at getting started and progressing through, you know, your first phase of building strength and muscle? No, I I actually think that makes a, a ton of sense. I, I it's just kind of nice to knock down some of those predetermined things that we think of resistance or weight training and how just how easy it can be because I would have never thought in a million years that to get started it you can just do these basic things and then just kind of go from there and if anybody listened to the episode that I did on the first one that helps with the cost magnifier you know when I started doing yoga the yoga routine I do is very simple and there's no reason not to do it and that helped me do it every single day and so when I think in terms of how easy weight resistance can be that helps with that and say, okay, well, if today's going to be a pull day, great. And if I feel like doing a a push day as well, then let's get at it. And if that, you know, I I don't know, it's just, it's so nice to see that it doesn't have to be a whole bunch of stuff. You know, you can just do these basic fundamental things and, and get real results and, and see some progress. Yeah. And that, that you bring in the, the issue of frequency, Frequency is also one of those ways of creating progress. You could do the same workout, but just do it twice in the week. And that's double the volume on that that particular muscle that you're working. And so, yeah, that that can be another way to break through um, strength plateaus. So, yeah, that's awesome. I I think this is a topic that we can come back to a lot. There's, There's so much to dive into. It's really fun to talk about because one of the best things about this weight loss journey is getting strong. And I think that, you know, a lot of people don't know, they know that that's possible, but they don't know how it all works together. And we could talk a lot more about how learning the philosophies of progressive overload and doing these things in a way that's doable and sustainable also has a lot to teach us about how to guide our eating and things like that as well. This can really really help the the whole process, not only physically, but also in our mindsets as well. So Wes, thank you for enduring this. Thank you for for helping me kind of draw out what what's uh, necessary to help people who are maybe stuck and they want they're interested, they're willing, but they just have no idea where to start. Yeah, thank you. It's 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 been a big help and I'm I'm kind of excited to get to get going on it. All right. Well, maybe in a few weeks, um, you can come back and tell us about how you've progressed. And then we can talk about how to troubleshoot where you're at, where you're stuck. And that might be the, the logical next chapter in this series. Yeah, that sounds great. All right. Well, thanks very much, Wes. Before we go, let me just mention, please review the podcast. Five stars, kind words, appreciated. More reviews will help more people find the podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend who you think would benefit from it, not only for for them, but for me. It's about me. And that's what we're all here for. Please um, spread my fame far and wide. 
No, you get the idea. We want to help more people with this stuff. And we can't do that without your help, both in the reviews and spreading the word, because this is a very new podcast. That being said, if you have an idea for an episode, if you have a topic that you would like to be addressed, if you have questions, you can email me at john at oaksweightloss.com. That's oaks with an E. You can comment in the YouTube comments or you, there's ways of reaching me. We have the Facebook group, Lose Weight with John. It's a great community, awesome community of people there. If you're looking for support or um, questions to be answered, you can hit us there. If you're watching on YouTube, you can follow this podcast wherever you download your podcast normally. And like, bu- likewise, vice versa. If you're listening, you can watch on YouTube as well. Am I forgetting anything, Wes? I don't think so. I think, I think we're good. Most of it. All right. Oh, and we will be doing a July habits challenge. So if you're interested in that, um, you can email me at the email I mentioned before and uh, just tell me you're, you're wanting to be a part of that and we'll stack some habits for you in July. And that's free, uh, free of charge right now. So Wes, thank you very much. And uh, to everyone else, we'll talk to you soon.